For the next step, we're going to create our controller object. We could just have the application delegate be our controller, but let's go ahead and create another object, another class, for which we'll create an instance of for our controller object. So I'm going to create a new class. So I'm going to go to File. By the way, I like to have, I'm going to insert it right after the nib file in, in here. So with that, so I have that nib file selected. I'm going to go File, New, File. And I'm going to choose under Mac OS 10. I'm going to choose an Objective-C class. So this is going to, we're going to create a new um, class for our controller object. So and it's going to be a subclass of NS object. And I'm just going to call it my controller. So make sure it's again make sure it's a subclass of NS object. So and go ahead and add it to my project. And there we go. And so now you'll see that Xcode automatically created both our header file and our implementation file. So our interface will be in the header file and our implementation will be in the .h file. So, so there's our controller object. And so what we're going to actually do is we're going to create an inst instance of this and place it in a nib file. There's actually two ways we could do this. We could create um, an instance of our controller programmatically when the application launches, or we could actually create one and, and freeze dry it and place it in a nib file. I'm going to do it that way for this example. So, what I'm going to go over here to it, it, go back to my nib file and back, it, back in the interface builder editor, go over to the object library, and if you go down, you'll see just a generic object in, in the object library. Make sure you do not choose the one that says object controller. That's not really what I just want a plain vanilla NS object. So, so I'm going to choose one of these and I'm going to just, now I'm going to drag it and I'm just going to drag it over here and just drop it into my nib file. So there it is, my object in my nib file. If I go over to the inspector and you'll see there it is. It's just a class. It's class and its object. So I'm actually going to change its class name. I'm going to change its class name to my controller. So now you'll see, lo and behold, we just created an instance of our new class we just created and freeze dried it and placed it into the nib file. So I'm going to save the nib file. So the next trick is I'm going to add all the outlets and actions that I'm methods I'm going to stubs I'm going to need so that so that the controller can talk to the view. So one Xcode 4 has a really convenient way to do this. So if I have the controller selected and I go over here to the I, I select the little tuxedo editor, that's what I call it. And notice it's splitting the screen vertically. I would actually like to have have let's see, I would like to actually have it done this way. There we go. So so now I've got and half the screen, I've got my interface builder editor, and the other half I've got my, the interface for my controller, which is perfect. So so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make some connections between the nib file here and, and my controller. So start with outlets. For, for one thing, you could do this a couple different ways. We could have, for one thing, is, is I'm going to need um, access to my matrix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, while holding the control button, there's a couple different ways you can do this, while holding the control button, I can drag from matrix into, in, and just into my header file and I want to create an outlet. I'm going to call it, uh, I'll call it line build matrix. And notice it's it's type and I just follow, just make sure this says outlet and I'm going to go ahead and say connect. And that, and that goes ahead and creates the, the appropriate property for us and and for that and we're all set to go on that. So what I'm also going to want is a connection with the pop the pop up button. So I'm going to control drag that and again I want an outlet. I'm going to I'm going to call this um, the level pop up button. So it'll automatically click connect make a connection for that. Um, I don't need a connection for my new game button. 
but I will need an outlet for the text field, so I'm going to go ahead and alt control drag that. We'll call that the um, I'll call that the score text field. So now we got that, and let's see. I th um, I think that's all. Oh, I'm actually going to need one for the window as well. So I'm actually going to. So later on, I'm going to want to resize the window. So I'm going to need an outlet for the window. So I'm going to control drag from actually from the window. Oops. Actually, I'll show you. Um, there's there's different ways we could do this. If you go to Files Owner and go under Links, you'll you can see it here as well. Actually, I'm just going to do it this way. So I'm going to I'm going to control drag from here. Over here insert an outlet, and I'll call it. Window. And there, I have an outlet for that. All right. So the next, so I've created all my outlets. Now, what I'm going to need now is some action methods. So, for instance, when the user when the user selects a new level, I'm going to want to know about that. So I'm going to go ahead and create control drag an action. Uh, oops, it's not quite grabbing it. So. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get the right thing. So I'm actually just from the pop-up button. Yeah, there we go. And now I'm going to change this to an action. So I'll, I'll say um, level selected. So this is going to be the name of the method that's going to get invoked when the user chooses a new level. We're also going to need one for, the, for a new game. So again, I'm going to make this an action. So I'll say now... I don't like to begin method names with uh, with new because new is sort of a special term. So I'm just going to call something different. I'll call it a fresh game. So and I'll create a new method for that. Um, let's see what else we need. Oh, and we're also going to need one for the matrix too as well. So I'm going to need an action. So whenever the user um, selects a button on the matrix, so I'll call I'll call this. Um, Build uh, point like that, and I'll go ahead and connect. Oops, I did that as a property. So let's undo add connection. Oops, wow, that's a bummer. I really want to get rid of that. Okay, because what I really want, to, I, I want, I really want to do is an action. So I'm gonna call it mine build. So I'll go ahead and connect. There we go. I actually don't want this property, so you know what? I am just gonna whack it. Let's get rid of it like that. Save, and actually, if I just go back to the normal editor here and go into my controller.m, I may get rid of this, this property that I want, I didn't want. Okay, so there we go. So you'll notice that that the interface builder editor automatically created stubs for the various methods and and went ahead and synthesized and connected up all the outlets that we need for this particular application. So I'm going to go ahead and save things here. And just to, just to show you how this is actually working, I'm going to, I'm going to I'm going to go and, and log, right, 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 and I'm going to go ahead and set log when these actual events occur. So call this one fresh game. And just write log message. Now, this NS log will actually write a string to the console and I'll show you how that works. So my field clicked. So let's start with that. So just to show you that these are actually actually getting invoked. So what's actually going to happen if you go our nib file now we actually have our controllers in the nib file. So the controller and the view and everything's going to be reconstituted out of the nib file and created when the program launches. And all these connections, all these outlets and actions we just created will all automatically be hooked up for us. 
So as a matter of fact, if we go ahead and just go ahead and build and run our application, no issues. And I'm going to go ahead and, and click so you can see the de debugger window here down here. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger so you can see it and go back to my application. You're going to see as I click the minefield, you're going to see down here that the, the appropriate uh, action is being invoked because I'm, I'm logging it here to the console. Notice when I click new game, that gets clicked. That's not clickable. And if we select a new level, right? That's also connected. So we can see that we have our controller, and at this point, we're, we're, we've got our controller, and we're set to go from there.